what's going on with the Las Vegas real estate market? We're going to tell you what happened last month and maybe a little bit about what we think's happened this month in February 2021. And that's what we're talking about. Let's roll. Rolling. Rolling. <laughs> Everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Angela O'Hare, your favorite Las Vegas realtor. That's right. And I am welcoming back myself to her <laughs> channel, Rockstar Realtor Rob Howe. Rob Howe. See, we got our matching shirts on. Yeah. The piece and Check the that rock out. sign or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You see, the show, if people don't know about it, the show that we've had, isn't really going anywhere. It's just being, you know, put on our own channels right now. Right. It's in a little hiatus because we are slammed yeah. busy. Y'all are keeping us busy. Yeah. And look, what do you think of my new studio? Woo! This is the first time Rob's seen it. Field goal, maybe a touchdown. Let's talk, let's call this a touchdown. Yes. It's not just three points. That's seven points. And stay tuned. I created a video from beginning to end and how I did my YouTube studio. So I will be posting that soon. I love it, Ange. Yes. This is solid, solid as a rock. Solid as a rock, rock. Is that our song called Solid as a Rock? Yeah, there is. <laughs> That's why I'm solid, solid. <laughs> Anyways, welcome to the February issue of our monthly market update. And in this issue, we will be going over January 2021 numbers. All right. I think we have some news. Unless you haven't been, unless you've been paying attention, you might already know where things are at. But if you haven't been paying much attention, <laughs> this might come as a shock to you. Yes. You know, of course, you know, January numbers we're coming off of Christmas, you know, so these numbers are okay, but we okay. are going to have predictions for February, March, and what's going yeah. on with the market right now in Las Vegas. I think they're still pretty darn more than okay. I mean, just considering traditionally right. where we would normally be coming out of the, the big holiday months. Yes. With that said, there were 2,638 single family homes that sold in the month of January which is actually down 20.2% from December and up 15.5% from January 2020. So at least we are like up against 2020 January numbers. Oh yeah, yeah. We're we're doing well there. And I mean, it just it just stands to figure that there'd be a little pullback. I mean, yeah, but I mean, still not really because what we're what I'm really concentrating on and is probably where we're going next. And why I'm saying this, um, because, you know, the number, the ultimate uh, volume doesn't necessarily tell the whole tale, does it? No, no, it doesn't. It's saying that we don't have enough inventory. And if we had enough inventory, then that volume would be a lot higher. I think it would be. Yes. I, I, I know it would be, yes. actually. Yes. <laughs> okay, and the median price remained the same at 345000 and it has been that way for the last three months, I think. It yeah. hasn't gone up. However, compared to January 2020, it is up 13.1%. Yep. So that really just tells you one year round, we went up 13.1% overall. Yes. And if you recall, the whole C word was not transpiring until really took into effect until March. So when we predicted last year's numbers, we thought Las Vegas was on track for having a record year. Yeah. Already in January 2020, we were thinking this was going to be a good year. So to be on top of an already good year from 2019 to 2020, does that yeah. make sense? Oh, yeah. Fortunately, I forgot to pull up the luxury market numbers for January. However, as we can tell and what's going on with the luxury market, it is on fire. It is smashing. Home run after home run in the yes. luxury market. Yeah. And believe it or not... There's bidding wars in the luxury market. There is, absolutely. And I mean, these houses sometimes are coming on. Uh, you know, in, in the luxury market, we make sure that we tell everybody what we have coming on. Right. And sometimes there's a lot of sort of like 
you, there's a prelude. You know that a property is coming on market. And so there's a, a little bit of a wait. You're trying to create that waiting list. Yes. And those, all the luxury agents, they know, let's get to, let's make sure we know each other. So that way, boom, as soon as it hits the market, sometimes we're getting multiple offers. Sometimes yep. that puppy's gone same day. And obviously it uh, relies upon location, location, location. Absolutely. Well, 100%. Yeah. The desirable areas in yeah. the valley. And not just Summerlin. Not just Summerlin. That's for sure. Yes. That's for sure. Um, so yeah, so the luxury market is still on fire. Um, yeah. Boiling hot. Yep. Boiling hot. And I think that's it's just another representation, representation of the entire market. Uh, I think what you said to me made a lot of sense the other day. You said it's not just, you know, usually we see those lower end, uh, uh, the lower price, it's always very competitive right. in there because, you know, you've got, that's the bulk of where your buyers are at, right? right. But we're seeing it across the board. Yeah. This is kind of un uh, unusual because you're seeing that prices, whether it's 300, whether it's five, seven, one million plus, yep. they're all getting multiple a, offers. They're getting a lot of activity. And uh, especially those properties that are ready to go, those ones that are mm -hmm. just, you know, they're, they, you don't need to do anything to them. They're just beautiful and they're set up, updated. Oh, they're yep. just gone. Yeah. They're just gone. No time. Yeah. So that brings us to the number of new listings we had last month. And that was only at 2,835 new listings, which is actually up 17.8% from December, but down 8.5% from the prior year. Yeah. Um, so that tells us, so here's the thing, we have, we're down from the prior year, yes. right? But the demand is so much higher. <laughs> That's what's unusual. And, and of course, we've been preaching, you know, uh, we've been preaching and the dog agrees. Yep. Yes, multiple agreements there. Yes. That with you sellers, now is your time. Now. You know exactly what you're going to get. You're going to get a lot of what you want. I mean, uh, let me just say, some sellers out there, are unreasonable right but for the most part you people are reasonable and know that you can get the highest market value for your home right now well if you're thinking about it geez what are you waiting for I mean we've been saying this for the last eight months yeah. now is a good time to sell mm -hmm. but I think and we're gonna go over months of supply I think now is even more important yeah I it, you know I don't want to it's hard to predict when this stops but again we you burden the hand you got it right now. You know it's you know right. it's solid as a rock right. right now. We know it's still very, very, very strong. And especially since we're approaching the whole spring summer selling season, people are out there buying right now. Yeah. And we're gonna go over that after we go over the numbers. We're gonna talk about the state of the market and what's going on. Um, but we just wanted to s preface that it's very important to sell right now. Yeah. And get it get it ready, get it going. And uh, you know what, I, even those properties that you don't want to have to put a lot into. I know there's those sellers who just, you know, that's a whole pain in the butt. Well, if that's your, if that's your thinking, now is still a wonderful time for you to sell. Because the, they're just, you know, priced right, it's going to go like that. Yeah. So that brings us to the months of supply. And drum roll on this one, Rob. Drum All right. Roll. Drum, 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 drum. We went from one month to 0.9 months. So we keep on going down. 2.1, 1.2. 1. 1. 1. 0.9 months. 0.9 months of housing supply. I mean, so we that's are... like 20, if you got 31 days, you got 28 days of supply. Is yeah. that what I'm hearing? Yeah. 0. 0.9, and, something and like that. And always, we always mention, you got to figure part of that is tenant occupied homes. So realistically, we probably have 0. 0.7, maybe yeah. even 0. 0.5. Yeah. And and really, if you think about it even more like this, yeah. if, you, if you parse it down even further and say the home that you're looking for, if it's that four bedroom, one right. story with a pool, now you're part three car of, garage, three car garage. <laughs> now you're suddenly looking at, oh, you might not even be there. No. You have to wait for the property that you're looking for. Or if it's there, it's a piece of junk and you don't want to buy that at the price the seller wants it. Right. So, so, you know, this is, you know. Wow, extremely low. Yes, extremely, extremely low. I've never seen it ever in my life. However, you know, I've only been in real estate for five years. Rob's been in a lot longer than me. I don't know if you've ever seen it this low. Uh, I don't recall it being this low, no. Um, there was times where it was pretty darn low, but yeah. I don't recall 0.9. Um, 
0.9 months of supply, especially because, uh, you know, like there were there were times where the, the, I could parse down the supply and say, well, a lot, a lot of the reasons why we're seeing more supply on the market right. is because we had a lot of short sales and things that would take time to sell or whatever. Right. Uh, but no, I don't, I, never anything like this, not yeah. in a more traditional sales market. You know, and I've been in the market for about five years in real estate and I don't even remember it approaching maybe three months at one point in time, but it's always been under three months of supply in the Valley for the last five years. Yeah. And the interesting thing about that is those were still highly competitive years. Yes. Those very were, competitive those years. Those were still years that you had multiple offers My sometimes. successful year was 2018. I mean, not a, one of my successful years was 2018, um, but last year Strong was actually year. my most successful year. Yeah. You're doing something right. Yep. With that being said, it put us at 10.5% down from December months of supply and get this, 59.2% down from year over year numbers. Wow. Wow. That's Nearly half. 60% less. Yeah. Oof. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. It's I just, know. you know, how long will this continue? That's the question. That is the um, question. A lot of people are sitting on the sidelines waiting for their opportunity, and I have some advice for you. You might want to get those, you know, he might want to get some supply of food and, <laughs> and stock up because your wait's going to be a little while. Exactly, exactly. You know. um, but, you yeah, know, this is an interesting number, uh, that there were 64.4% of the homes was on the market for 30 days or less. And I think that's a very low number. You would think that number would be a little higher considering how fast things are moving. But because this is part of December, maybe because the not too many people traditionally were shopping. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I would say that there's a combination of events happening there. And one is that there is still that traditional time of the year and you see a lot of junk. Yes. You see, we do, we still do have the, uh, tenant list, tenant occupied listings. True. That those are skewing the numbers completely. True. And then you have junk that's overpriced. Yeah. Sellers, you know, the unreasonable sellers that are out there that do know, they know very well, this is their time, but they don't want to let that property go for, they just have a number in mind. Yeah. It's just they're stuck on that they're number stubborn. and they're not moving. Yeah. And they don't really care if that property needs a ton of work or whatever it needs. Yeah. Because you know. I showed a listing and I mentioned this in either the Robin Ann show or a previous market update that it was on the market for over 300 days and it had outland just wall colors. It was in Summerlin with a pool, beautiful yard, but the seller didn't budge on price at all. She yeah. felt very strongly that what she had it listed for was the price of the home. Yeah. I just want to talk what's going on right now with the market. And okay. I mean, we went over January numbers, but you know, February has been cray cray. Yeah. I mean, when I say crazy, I mean crazy. I'm showing listings that I don't even get to show. My clients pick 10 houses and by the next day, there's only maybe one left to show because things are moving fast. Yeah. Things are getting multiple offers. Now, the only caveat, and Rob and I were talking about it, is for local buyers. Yeah. Because you're competing against all these out-of-state buyers that have cash, that have the capability of bidding over appraised value, over asking value. And if they're paying cash, there is no appraisal. So it's very hard for the local people in Las Vegas to buy right now. To, yeah. Yeah. Because there are there are threshold of living here and in what we're you know expecting to be able to go out and buy has rapidly changed. And those buyers that are coming from other states have really changed it. Right. They've changed the threshold. And as we mentioned, you know, before we used to see it maybe in the four hundred and under range where there was multiple offers and very sure. competitive. And, and and in certain locations, you know. Exactly. Right? Now I'm showing $800,000 homes. That's very competitive getting multiple offers and the listings are going like that. Right. Yeah. It's, you know. <sighs> and the only reason it is this way is because our lack of inventory. If mm -hmm. you sellers want to make money right now, I'm serious. Right. Now. Just just stop. 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 <laughs> stop. List it. Stop giving yourself all the excuses and right. make it happen because, you know, it's time. It's time because we don't know. And, you know, with real estate, you never know what the market's going to be like. We don't know in a year if it's going to plummet or if it's going to continue to rise. But we know known fact. Right. right. We know. Known factors. You yes. want to work with known factors. And I, I think the uh, a big point is, 
you know, when, yeah, we don't know if it's going to plummet. I don't think it's going to plummet. But what I do think might happen is it changes from a seller's market to more of a buyer's market. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you right now, as a seller that, um, you know, for me as a seller, I don't want to have to do that. Right. I don't want to have to give more on closing costs. I don't want to have to come down on my price. I want my freaking price. Is he? And Izzy agrees. Right. There's a major advice that I want to give to buyers who are thinking about buying in Las Vegas and wanting a deal. Don't expect any deals right now. Yeah. There's a, you know, it's like sometimes you don't, especially right now. Right. You don't want to run around looking for the deal. You want to get the home you want, the, right. the home you need. That's that's it. Yeah. To me, that's it's about attaining that proper. And if you need help with closing costs, then I suggest maybe now is not the time to buy. Unfortunately, because it is a seller's market, and sellers are not keen to giving concessions unless maybe that home's been on the market for thirty days or longer. Maybe you could get some concessions, but don't expect it. So when you're asking your agent to offer less than less price and ask for closing costs, your deal's done before we even submit it. Yeah, you're going to learn the hard way and, you know, we'll we'll travel down that road with you if we have to and we understand that people take uh, the realtor's word with a grain of salt oftentimes. But, you know, in the end, you're going to find out that uh, that that may be a hard road for you to go down. And I, I've been there where somebody's, you know, they're, they're, they're still doing that move that I'm sort of advising them not to do and then when they don't get it, they're really emotionally hurt by it yes. and I'm like... This is exactly what I wanted to avoid. I don't like seeing somebody hurt. Yeah. You know, it, it, a lot of letdowns. Yeah, it'll always work out in the end, but you you know, hear what we're saying and maybe let that marinate and be ready <laughs> to go to bat when you know. This it's like saying, Hey, that pitcher's got a really good fastball, watch out for it. And then you go up there and you look for a curveball. What are you doing? <laughs> we told you. And then another thing I want to talk about is buying new construction. Buying new construction in Summerlin. Um, what I've noticed, get ready. Okay. And there's only one particular builder. Okay. And maybe I'll mention the builder because I don't. I sure. Think, I mean, if why not? If they're doing it, they, so, they're owning it. Pulte, in particular, is creating what's called these bidding wars on land. So, say they only release two or three lots per release, only once a month. Okay. And each release, they increase the price. Not only do they increase the price of the home, they also increase the lot premium. Now there may be two or three reserves on that one lot. Just because you have the lot reserve doesn't mean you're guaranteed that lot. Right. So what happens is now is that if there are three people that want that lot, you're going to have to produce a, the highest and best offer of what you want to provide on that lot premium. And the lot premium is already $100,000. So how much more willing are you going to go on that lot premium to outbid it so you can get that lot? Right. Now, food for thought on this. If you do this, what happens if you want to sell your home in a year or two? Mm -hmm. And the appraiser is going to be looking at the value of the home, comp, model to model. They're not going to know what lot premium you paid yeah. for that house. They may base a little on views, but really they're going to base it off of, you know, my plus or minus the square footage of the yard, of the house, and the updates. You, yeah, you better be committed to staying in a home for a while. Yes. You know, because, I mean, there, there might be some here and there where your, your value is going to go up, but you're, it's a hidden cost that doesn't show up on that other end of the comp sheet, right? Right. So, And that's huge. And they're also doing that in the Pinewood community in Sky Canyon, where they are producing. Of course, the lot premiums aren't as high in Sky Canyon as it is in Summerlin, However, because the demand is so high right now that they're doing that now. But there was another builder that I went to go show this weekend, which is um, Aviano by Toll Brothers. And they're doing a first come first serve basis, which I agree with them 100% because I don't think it's fair to be pitting everyone against each other to yeah. be greedy and get the highest and best price. Yeah. I mean, I know they can because we're in that type yeah. of market. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. That's the old lesson there. And I, I mean, I come, I came from a time that right before I got into the business, you know, I was, I was seeing that these builders were doing all these crazy things right. just because they could. And uh, eventually, you know, the, most of those builders are not in business anymore. I just, I think you should be smart. Um, Pulsey Builders has been around a long time, but right. I, they have got a little uh, nickname out there, Pulsey, 
builders ah, full of teeth. I didn't know that. Uh, yeah. So so I mean they are they are being um, they have they don't have a ton of sites. Pulte doesn't have a ton no. out there right now. They've no. only got a few that they're they're uh, they're working on. So they're just trying to maximize what they can out of it. But I still think for the long term as a builder and your brand, I think Toll Brothers is being a much smarter. Yes. Um, although you're going to pay a premium for a Toll Brothers homes at, as it is and their upgrades are co costly, at least all that is up front and they're up front about right. what they're doing and they're not just trying to, you know, really kind of get you by the old. Yeah, and Lennar has been fair. I've been dealing with Lennar and also KB Homes. I have a couple closings in Bristol Valve and they're very fair. But my point is, is that these builders are only releasing two to three homes a month. Yeah. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yep, they do it in all. I mean, like well, all, everywhere does it, but because yeah. one, they don't want to, you know, release a lot of lots and then lots of construction and two, the lumber. But each time, well, they hate standing inventory, right. so they want to make sure even if they list, even if they uh, sell it to somebody and that person happens to fall out, that they still can get another buyer right. very quickly because they're only really working with one lot at that point. Right. They don't want. They won't release the next series until. All of the other houses in the first series or release yep. has been um, sold. Yep. Yep. And they certainly won't sell you their model homes until much later into their process when they're about to close out. Exactly. A lot of people ask me about that, um, you know, because these model homes are beautiful. Yeah. And they think, oh, well, you know, can we do a... Can we buy it and then lease it back to them? <laughs> ah, they're not doing that. No. And then the model homes, you know, it usually comes Whoa. furnished and with all the decor. So they're usually in the million range, if not more. Oh, yeah. There's going to be very, they price well, Especially up. told they'll brothers. Tell you, yeah, yeah, they'll tell you what they think they'll sell it for. You right. Know, they'll roughly tell you that oh, it's probably going to be around this. You can tell by that number. They're right. building in a lot of equity that they think is coming ahead. Well, you know, Pulte is actually releasing a new, I just saw the homes. I figured out all the way at the top of Far Hills what who the builder is. Oh, who's uh, all it's the way at the top? Carmel Cliff by Pulte. Okay. You know, there's uh, there's um, Acadia Ridge by Toll Brothers, and then right on top of it is going to be Carmel Cliff. So Carmel Cliff will be opening up in March. Okay. Uh, they are forming interestless, March or April, actually, I think April. There's a lot happening, a lot yeah. of new builds, but... They are selling very fast because of the limited inventory that we have here. Yeah. Uh, I would like to put one little bit of information, piece of thought on, onto this last bit that it, I think is coming coming clear to me now. I've been here all my <laughs> life. Vegas is a valley. Right. I've always known, especially when I got into real estate, that we would run out of land at some point. Right. You know, I can see the end is near, folks. And what this means to me is that we're going to build out basically the entire valley. There's not going to be a lot of new home construction. North Las Vegas. There's, but even that area, you know, they're yeah. they're chomping it away. They're they're getting rid of it. Well, and maybe we're still ten years out from this happening. I think twenty years. Okay. You know, I think we're probably accelerating that speed. We, we are go. now, actually. You, you know. Yeah. So my point ultimately is that you know people wonder: Will we? Do we have room to grow? Do, do, do can prices rise? Yes, and this is why, because if there's nothing left, it's going to turn inward, and it means that all these homes get redone over time that are inner more. Right. And basically, values continue to go up. It yeah, is a very strong possibility. What's left is on the outskirts. Obviously, Summerlin has only 5,000 acres left. They have about 20 years, but you know that could change now because just the way we're selling. Yeah. But then you also got to think North Las Vegas is filling up by the 215 Aliante through Lofi. Yeah. That's going to start filling up. And then you got Cadence and Henderson is filling up. Yeah. And then Southern Highlands. I mean, where else are we going to go? So it makes sense we're, that we're valley to valley. We're, yeah. we're we're mountain to mountain, ridge to ridge. We're getting we're getting filled up. Yeah. And the east side's already been full years. For years. For the most part, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just saying that's where I think we're going. That's a very good valid point. I think, you know, if people worry about buying right now during the peak is that, you know, your house is always going to increase in value. There may be peaks and valleys, but it only always goes up. I just think in Vegas, as, as long as things, uh, you know, can work out for people to be able to to work here and have uh, have uh, income and everything, you know, right. which there are some things when it comes to our casinos we need to get back on track, but we're, things are looking okay. We'll, we'll see. But 
Ultimately, if there's no room, there's no room. There's no room. Is it? Supply and demand will come back around. Yes. Maybe not like it is now. I mean, maybe even worse. Who knows? We'll see. Yeah. And then for those of you that are waiting for the shoe to drop. Yeah, um, shoe to drop. Just, just. Uh, I don't think the prices are going to continue to. I don't think they're going to go down at all. I think they're going to just continue unless the sellers come out and play. Unless we have more inventory. Because we don't know what's going on with the forbearance homes. We don't know if the lenders or the mortgage providers are going to continue to extend it just because the way the economy is. Um, and we don't know about the eviction moratorium because they may extend that even longer, even though it ends, what, end of March? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, there's going to be some changes uh, on the horizon. But uh, even when those things change, do I think that the ultimate reason why people are coming here changes? No. Not necessarily. So. No. And then remember on our previous show... Um, we talked about when you know Biden was running for office about that fifteen thousand dollar. That's another could be another stimulator for our market. But even though you have that fifteen thousand dollar grant, there's no inventory. Well, look, look, I mean, and you and I know this is this is going off into some other areas now. But yes. you and I know that even you know somebody comes to us pre-approved with one of those programs, we know right off the bat that there's a number of sellers that are not particularly excited to accept some of those uh, um, loans because they if they have other options. So if you're in a multiple offer situation and you have one of those, it, you know, it's not impossible. I'm just right. saying it's going to limit you to some degree. Right. Exactly. And that would be probably an FHA loan, a Fannie Mac loan. Yep. It's going to be FHA based. It's going to be government backed. So, yeah. um, you know, those, you got to... Uh, we'll have to see. It's it's. This is where you know the experience. Uh, I can't. I just can't tell you. Everybody just thinks realtors are realtors. No, no. you got to have experience. You have to have people who understand how to get you the most out of what you have. Right. You know, and to really help you with all those angles. Yeah, because there's a lot of realtors out there. I mean, Vegas alone, or I should say, Nevada alone, probably has fourteen thousand, or no, yeah. just Vegas. Yeah has 14,000 real estate agents, and that includes brokers. Yeah. And um, and there's probably only a handful of successful ones that really know the market. Well, yeah, and when, when successful is very uh, is, is, you know, it's subjective because I can tell you that, like, for example, Zillow is now doing a brokerage, right? Yes. Well, if you're a Zillow agent, and I hate to say this, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't, but I'm going <laughs> to. Um, if you're just, Zillow just hands you over your leads. I yeah. mean, so you're just... I mean, do I want an agent that knows how to market themselves and get their own business? Or do I want somebody that just gets their, that pays Zillow or that goes to that kind of a brokerage that just, you know, gets their leads for nothing, doesn't have any try? I mean, no, I want somebody who's experienced, that's under, that really has worked hard to figure out how they get their business and how to market themselves. Right. Because when it comes down to it, if you can't market yourself, there's no way you can market somebody's home for them properly, True. in my opinion. True. Exactly. That's a valid point. Strong agent is going to help you. Not only that, but a relationship for life. You're not just looking at somebody for that moment. A lot of people think, oh, you know, it just had this happens right now. Well, if you're with a good agent, you've made a relationship for life. Exactly. Or at least as long as I'm in the business. Right. I'm hiring an assistant to help me with that. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I need help. Speaking of which, if you are in real estate, I'm just going to add this here. Okay. If you're in real estate and you have at least one year experience in real estate, I'm hiring an assistant to help me out. Yep. It's All right? time. It's time. And that assistant is going to be part time. However, it's, it's going to be Tuesday through Sunday and you'd be responsible for numerous things, but you have to be a licensed agent in order to, to right. help me out. And you better know how to handle a toilet brush. Oh, wait. No, not, that, that, was, that was something else. Oh, sorry. I thought. Uh, all right. Well, <laughs> let us know in the comments what you think of our market updates. We try to make it interesting. I know it's pretty much the same format. Um, I've noticed that we haven't been getting as many views as we used to on our market updates. Let us know what we're doing wrong. Yeah, we're probably just bloviating a lot yeah we like to bs a lot no not bs but there's a lot of information there's in a here. lot of information as you know we like to talk and we are very knowledgeable agents that's right and we like to talk but when you're needing some time alone you need to we know how to shut up as well true because i need my time alone <laughs> 
Anyways, if you like this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment down below, share with a friend, and smash that smash subscribe it. button. Thank you so much for watching, and see well, you on the next one. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Yeah, it. thanks. It's always good to have Rob. I miss talking to him. I mean, <laughs> or at least filming with him. Yeah, but we've been. We still busy. chat. We still chat and tell each other what's happening out in the world in our worlds. Yeah. Uh, well, rock on and do it peacefully, <laughs> and we'll we will see, see you on the, the next, next market one. update. That's right. <laughs> Look for Ann to be on my channel soon too. Oh yeah, that's right. Peace out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rare Two. on certain properties, you only can do that. Do not ask <coughs> for Izzy. Izzy, <coughs> he's no. He knows a lot more about Izzy. Motherfucker. Hey. Get in here. <laughs> uh, dog knows a lot about real estate. What can I say? That'll be a great blooper, and I hope you can actually <laughs> slip in a couple. Izzy, come on. Oh, my son's probably home. Let's just pause this. For